everybody, Steve from Paramine. Welcome. Going to look at some more of the sexy new features in the recently released Reason 8. First thing, let's look at the layout of the program. Well, we can still navigate to different views with F5, Mixer, F6, Rack View, F7, Sequencer. But we do have now uh, a little bit more visual of a way to do that if we want. And we can actually double click any of these to get that view. So the complete view is a double click. If I come down here and go sequencer, double click, that's on the actual name. It will go maximum view for that. But we also see these buttons. So these would be maybe full moon, half moon. So this lets me do the split view. The browser also has this. I can actually hide the browser if I want to. So double click, double click wherever I want to be. If come down to the sequence. You still use those function keys if you want to. Now it's very easy to move around. So the usual suspects from the previous version, seven versions of Reason are here, have added a couple things though. Have the ability to quantize right in the transport. So that is baked into the transport. Can also get my note values. So none of that's different. It's just that I can actually hit that button after I've selected content in the sequencer. Um, I also can now launch my on-screen piano keys from a single click. My Reeve Groove mixer is still down here. That used to be an icon instead of a word. So subtle little changes. Loop no longer says loop. It shows the loop that is kind of the universal loop uh, uh, symbol. Um, but everything else is going to be there. Your tempo, your BPM, um, the ability to turn the click and pre-count on and off are all there. They've just made it a little bit more modern in its approach. Um, but we do also now have the ability to hide the transport or show the regroove mixer from your windows. So if you don't need to see that transport, it will free up a little bit of real estate for you. So we have changed a little bit of the look, flattened out the bevels, some different ways to navigate. I can detach windows to put them to a second monitor, which I don't have right now. With these, the transport's a little bit different. So real subtle, but somewhat important changes in the workflow. Up in the top of the sequencer where we get the tools, change that, but they haven't added any tools. Snap is the same, that is S to turn that on and off. We can get a value of snap right here. When we start to have material, the inspector will populate. But one of the other bigger changes was the sequencer and how we can edit MIDI notes. So let's go ahead and set this up real quickly. Let's uh, change tempo a little bit. I can use plus and minus on my numeric keypad to change the tempo. I'm going to hit C to turn the click on. I'm going to turn the click sound down because I don't need it to be that loud. So I have a really cool combinator patch from Pantheon, which is an incredible refill. Um, let's just go ahead and record for a second. I'm also going to hit Command P to turn on my pre-count. Now you see that that lit up both of those down there. Command P is the amount of bars before it starts recording. Should be set to one. Take it back to the beginning, and I'm going to record for just a second. All right, so let's go ahead and go into editing mode. I can get to edit mode by hitting Command-E. I can get to edit mode by hitting Return. I can get to edit mode by double clicking. In other words, edit mode is so important. There are many ways to get into editing mode. G and H are my zoom tools. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So there's what I just recorded. A little bit of a different look once we get to the editor as well. I'm going to select all the information. I can see that I am off the grid a little bit. So let's use quantize. I go 16th note quantize. I click it. We see things move. It's how easy it is to quantize, right? So let's look at some of the things that they've changed with this. Now, these are not big changes, but I kind of think it has a big impact on the workflow in Reason. Um, the first thing is people have complained forever that there wasn't a selection available on the front of a note, if you could believe that. It used to be only here that I could actually do this to the note. Now I can actually take this and we kind of see some of these things, right? And I was kind of purposefully off on this so we can kind of demonstrate this. So I can click, hold and pull. Now moving a note's no big deal, but then changing the duration of it from the front of the back is kind of new. Um, love that ability. I am in snap mode at a 16th note. That's why it was moving in that way. Um, 
I can also add or subtract notes with a double click, which is pretty cool. So they have definitely given some different capabilities in that editor. Now, I know those may not seem like huge deals, but when you are actually working, every little bit does help with this. So just a couple simple little tricks and I should be Right. So it's not on all the way, which I kind of did on purpose. And it just kind of shows some of the editing on how cool it is that I can actually pull from either side. I can place my notes. I can change the durations on these. Now you could do this before, but you could definitely not do all of this uh, in one click. You definitely had to do a couple different moves. So it may seem like it's not a big deal to take something from three steps to one step, but when you're working, it really is. It does make a big difference from that. Let's go ahead and add another device. I'm gonna right click, go down to instruments, go ahead and put Korg in here or the Kong in here. Now, uh, a different look completely once we look at uh, the tracks list here, and I'm gonna go ahead and come out of edit mode and go back to song view. So this is actually my play button now. If I'm gonna play through, Right, I need to have this. So I can use my up and down arrows um, to move around my tracks, but I'm going to click to get this button. Right, So we definitely want to think, I need to see that to know that that's going to play that device. One of the things they haven't done yet is, in the rack view, let me determine which device I'm going to play by clicking on it here. Right, I just really need to do that. That would be one of my humble suggestions for them for the future. But you can just kind of see the difference here. There's definitely a more modern look to it, but what do we have? So this is gonna give me the playability, and that's a single click on the actual device icon. Mute, solo, record automation, record. I can record notes without automation. I can record automation without notes. It defaults to both. I have the ability to put a groove channel on. I can mute a track. I can also get rid of the extra lanes that I might create with dub, uh, which would be overdubbing and alt, which would be alternative takes. So I can hit the X to get rid of those. So nothing really new. It's just kind of a different look with it. One of the things that is new is the color coding. The color coding is now consistent from the device to the track. So they've, they've really worked a lot on consistency through the program. So we go to the rack view and I'm gonna right click on Kong and I'm gonna go down to my track colors and I'm gonna give this one a, a sky blue, right? So now when we go back to the sequencer, we'll see the sky blue and uh, I'm gonna liberate <clears throat> this information and we see that that clip now is sky blue. So consistency in naming, consistency in color coding is a big deal. So there's the sky blue in the mixer, there's the sky blue in the mixed channel device in the racks, and there is the sky blue on the clip and on the track. I think that is huge. Not all these things work this way before, and it could get a little confusing. You know, one of the challenges in Reason, as much as I love it, is when you have 50 devices, it can be a little confusing to know what you're playing and what it is. So any help that they can do with a naming convention and a color coding is a big deal. The same thing, if I change a patch now, that will, instead of saying Kong, it's actually going to tell me the name of the kit everywhere until I auto change it. That is also a big change. So naming conventions, color coding, the look in the sequencer and the ability in the sequencer to edit notes, to delete with a double click, to add with a double click, to have the ability to move from the front or the back of the note. So some really cool stuff. Um, like I said, watch the other video as well, where we did a little bit on, on drag and drop and about the browser focus. You add this all up and I think you're going to have a better experience in Reason. Whether you've never used Reason before, if you come into it fresh, I think you'll just think, wow, this is great. But if you have used Reason before, this is going to be re refreshing. And I would wager a bet that you're probably going to be a little bit more inspired uh, to work. It's just a lot of fun to work in this. So go get it. $129 uh, free if you bought it after July 1st, 2014. Have some fun and I will see you soon. Very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool, and until I came here for the first time, I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are 
outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since since coming to Pyramind, I, I've discovered electronic music, and you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me, and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail. We, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really help me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.